God bless you all on this day that God has given us. And so here we are gathered at our homes or wherever you are. And I'm just happy to see that we're here together and God is always good. Um, today, I am going to really focus more on my message. So this will be shorter than usual. In the midst of everything that's happened, I believe that the sermon today and what I'm going to talk about, especially what's going on right now in our world, uh, is the most important part of today, in my opinion. And because of that, I will keep everything much more shorter. So I welcome you all, and let's start with a word of prayer. Our Lord, our God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for all that you provide. We ask that your Holy Spirit touches the hearts, the minds of all human beings. As right now, Lord, it is an interesting time where people are dealing with pandemics, where people are calling out for justice, especially that black lives matter. And so we ask God that your Everything that occurs here and now blesses us and brings us to a place to continue to stand up for what is right. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. I'll be reading from Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. It says, so God created Man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. I want to sing an a cappella today. It's called Created Me a Clean Heart. I believe that we need to start to do an inventory in our hearts, in our minds, and in our soul. And honestly, if we have anything that allows us to see a human being in a way that is not the love of God, well, I hope that this song will help us to be aware of it and ask God to change our whole being. So here it is. Create in me a clean heart. Oh, God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, oh, God, and renew a right spirit within me. And cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. Or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Now sing with me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O oh Lord, or take your Holy Spirit from me restore to me the joy of your salvation and renew a 
thy spirit within me. Now I want to talk to the children as we do our children's sermon. Um, uh, kids, I miss you very much. I've gotten to see uh, several of you in different ways from the church. And so in the community in, in Dover and in Morristown, uh, I want to show you something, kids. So someone gave me this. It says, uh, I can't breathe. Okay, maybe if I put it a little closer, it says, I can't breathe. Okay. Now, someone was kind enough to give me that. As a gift, I was uh, one of the speakers at Parsippany um, for all the protest and that Black Lives Matter. And so someone gave it to me. And it says, I can't breathe and you see the cross. You know, I have had to talk to my own kids about systematic racism. You're like, what is that? Um, look, when someone's being bullied or mistreated because of the color of their skin, or whatever other reason you notice it makes the person sad. If you notice it makes the person feel awful about himself or herself, we cannot be silent anymore. And we need to speak up. We need to say something. We need to have courage. And that's what I told my kids, that they need to say something when it occurs, when it happens. Because unfortunately, George Floyd an African-American was murdered because police officer, and please, not all police officers are bad, but this particular one and the other three, one had their knee here, and he said, I can't breathe for close to nine minutes, and it killed them, and the other three just watched. So children... When you see someone being bullied or mistreated because of the color of the skin or because if they speak another language besides English, you speak out and speak up and speak for that person because that's what God will want us to do. I, I hope you children are doing well. I miss you very much and God bless you. God bless you. At this moment, I'm going, going to Galatians, uh, chapter 3, verse 28. And it says here, there is no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male and female, since you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Heirs according to the promise. Just bear with me as I need my, my laptop today to bring the word, but you can still see my head. And that's important, right? <laughs> And so in the system that we are all living here in America, right, there is the best life according to your gender, your sexual orientation, the color of your skin, and depending on the status of your citizenship. So what I just talked about, there is such a thing. And that life would be to be a white, straight male born in America. Now, the opposite, meaning the worst life, would be a black transvestite who looks like a woman and is undocumented. That is the worst. And the reality is that it is undeniable unless you want to deny the truth. If you speak to enough people out there, they will tell you the statement I just said is truth, unless they don't want to admit that this is the system, the matrix, that this is the world we are born into. 
This is the context in which we have entered this world that has a hierarchy according to your race and other factors. Colin Kaepernick kneeling was never a disrespect to the American flag, but to bring awareness of the mistreatment of black people from police officers. Because racism towards blacks actually does exist in our system. And now the commissioner of the NFL and others want to apologize and admit they were wrong, which means he was right. But it took so many deaths of black men from police officers and black people in general and the tipping point was George Floyd to be killed to finally push against some of this white fragility. These peaceful protests, people speaking out, social media being used in a positive way and other organizations saying and acting and giving funds to promote that black lives matter as well. But unfortunately, it took these martyrs to get us to change the culture, the ambiance, the minds and hearts, and the atmosphere that black lives do matter. There is still so much work to be done to continue to push in this right direction. We cannot stay silent anymore. We must speak that historically and repeatedly media has been giving blacks a bad reputation. We must speak that segregation of schools and neighborhoods has caused the black community to suffer so much. We must speak that media depicts whiteness as the human ideal. We cannot just say, and especially white America, that I was taught to treat everyone the same or people just need to be taught to respect one another. That is not nearly enough because we cannot ignore anymore the racial system that has been placed for centuries and centuries that causes the injustice towards the black community. And considering what has occurred, my son has asked me, why was race invented? I told them, son, there are social and economic factors to come up with race. The race science attributed that whites were superior beings and that blacks were inferior beings and that established cultural norms that led to legal rulings and gave privileges to whites. The first time we see the term white was in the late 1600s. And by 1790, people were asked to claim race on the census. Chance the Rapper, as a black man said, both Jesus and blacks were publicly humiliated, subjected to the utmost indignity and cruelty. They were stripped in order to be deprived of dignity, then paraded, mocked and shipped, derided and spat upon, tortured for hours in the presence of crowds for popular entertainment. It is our responsibility to speak against this cruel and evil systematic racism towards blacks. For if we do not do anything or just continue to be silent, we are saying that this evil is okay. So your silence keeps the system as it is, like if there's nothing wrong, which there is. That's why United States right now is in an uproar. That's why people are protesting. I remember my last class of seminary when the teacher asked us to close our eyes. She said that she will say one word 
and according to that one word, tell me the color, skin, and the gender. And we are to give an answer. She said for us to be honest and it's okay to say it and the first thought that comes out of our mind. She said the word criminal and everyone spoke out with their eyes closed and said a black man. It is time to assess our hearts, our minds, and our souls and speak up and speak out. And it's unfortunate that these individuals had to be martyred for us to be in a place right now saying that black lives matter. And so let us continue in that spirit of justice, knowing that God is moving and let us continue on that path. Amen. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to everybody who has been giving either their time here at the food pantry, have been giving their treasure, their offering and tithing, and their talents as well administratively in the church or at the food pantry or in other ways as well. And so at this moment, we're going to play, pray for the offering and let us do that. Our Lord, our God, we thank you for all that involved, not just in this church, but in the community that offer to help in the food pantry or give to the food pantry or give financially, Lord, to continue this church to uh, reach out to everyone and bless everyone and people to bless, be blessed inside of here. So, Lord, here is the offering and tithing, and we give it to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I leave you with this. I can't breathe. So go forth and give the breath of justice to God's people. Amen. God bless you all and take care of yourselves. <laughs>